Mikel Arteta says Arsenal are ready to be active in the January transfer market. Allegedly, Arsenal have a free run at Nico Williams. Mikel Arteta has also refuted claims of and suggestions of selling Gabriel Jesus in January. And we're still linked with the Yokoreses and Kudases of this world. Let me share my screen and let's go over the reports and the tabloids, people. Now, first things first, owing to a probably our injury crisis, Mikel Arteta says Arsenal are ready to be active in the January transfer window if their injury crisis does not cease. The Gunners could be without six defenders for Wednesday's Champions League game against Monaco, which we'll be doing a watch along, while allegedly Thomas Partey is a doubt too. We know Tommy Yasu has been a no-show basically this season. Benjamin White's had surgery. Gabriel Magalhães, Jurian Timbar, Alexander Zinchenko, Ricardo Calafuri are all allegedly missed training on Tuesday afternoon. Partey is also absent. So I don't know how or who is going to be playing in defence, but it is what it is. Mikel Arteta said, the window gives us an opportunity to strengthen the team if we feel that it's needed and we feel that we have the capacity to do that as well. Probably needed to do that in the summer. We are on it and just have to assess, assess the situation because it's changing every week, true. At the moment, not for the better, but I'm positive that in a few weeks we're going to be in a better place. Hopefully, man, but the damage could be done. We're really struggling for numbers. The games are coming thick and fast at this current period, people. Um, so, yeah, it's a madness. I think we all know that. Mikel Arteta did also say in February... And I keep saying it, that we've got one of the smallest squads in the Premier League. Rightly or wrongly, did we leave the summer transfer window feeling we've got stronger squad depth or did we take a step forward and take a step back? Now, I'm not saying that's progression or regression collectively, but it's almost like you're in the same spot and in the same place. And yeah, this season, com in comparison to last, which we should have taken heed from, obviously it's been unprecedented, whether it's the absence of Martin Odegaard, whether it's, you know, been Gabriel Magalhães, whether it's been Thomas Partey, you know, the couple of games he's missed, the options of Zinchenko, Tomiyasu, Timber and Calafuri and you know there's probably been some others I'm missing out. When you look at the Premier League table for injuries people, we're fourth um, essentially, kind of there and abouts where we are in the actual Premier League table Days lost, we stand at 406 people, we've had 16 different injuries. Now some of our players have been out for longer, some players have had a couple of injuries, you know you look at Tomiyasu who's been injured, come back, got injured again, Zinchenko the same logic Martin Odegaard was missing for a 11 or 12 games and there's been a couple of other knocks and niggles Mikel Moreno's had two as well at the very least so yeah injuries happen man and you know it could be better it could be worse you know West Ham have had the least injuries Brighton and Ipswich which I know technically the rhetoric around injuries or talking points in the Premier League are respectfully reserved for the top six or traditional top six but hey we have to count ourselves lucky we could have had one more than than brighton or rib switch or had players for longer days um so we can count ourselves lucky in that regards it could have obviously been better you see city liverpool chelsea for example collectively they've had a better time with injuries you know arsenal and spurs collectively have had the same kind of injuries really and truly they've their players have missed two more days so again i can't it's like standing in the rain and complaining while you're wet of course you know I'm not saying you need 100 players. I understand the club probably are aware of this and tried, but at the end of the day, we can only deal with the eventualities. And ahead of Monaco, apparently there's no Gabriel Calafuri or Zinchenko ahead in full training. Timber was missing too. Now, the only tonic I can say to that is we all know Mikel Arteta, especially during this climate, has been very coy and clever with injuries. Some players, he's played down their availability. They've been there. And then the vice versa of that, you know, Zinchenko can't stop talking. He said Mikel Arteta likes players going on the team bus when they're not fit. We all know Arteta, in my opinion, and the media staff at Arsenal play a bit of a clever game with when they're shooting training, not showing players that have injuries stuff around them so who knows man but at the same time i think essentially it's guesswork you never quite know who is or isn't going to be involved where arsenal are concerned Mikel arteta has ruled out the possibility of gabriel jesus leaving in january people he has said reports of gabriel jesus leaving and going to brazil in january are nonsense like all strikers they go through phases and moments his attitude has been really good it always is we're going to support him as much as possible which from a human point of view hear that i think every arsenal fan would love to see Gabriel Jesus get back to his best or what those first six months are. But at the end of the day, it does feel like an Arsenal football club, despite maybe we're exaggerating after drawing with Fulham after getting our form together and may, you know, Arsenal and football fans, when things are going well, we're very excited and we're quite critical. I do think speaking for myself and everyone, there's a, regardless of what the climate looks like, there's a 
uh, an overspill frustrations because of it feels like whether it's needing to sign and address certain positions, whether we need a bigger squad depth, whether it's on the field tactics and stuff, feels like we've been talking about this. And for me, I don't want to be disrespectful to these players, but there's a lot of, you know, while we've spent a lot of money, we've got a bit of stability, we've obviously got a decent squad on paper. It feels like we're carrying a lot of a lot of players, really. You know, I'm a big fan of Gabriel Jesus. Gabriel Jesus, we're carrying you. Tommy Asu, you're never here. Zinchenko, you're never here. Kivio, the drop-off when you're available is too much of a drop from Gabriel to, to Kivio, respectfully. You know, we're having to be cute and clever with Califuri and 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 jury and timber we're probably in a negative way old benjamin might be in out for a long time he's played with injuries you know it, on the form front you never i love trossard but you never know what you're going to get from him and he's done a lot better than martinelli another one i love but you don't know what you're getting Gabriel Zeus, you know, scoring goals is one thing has always been an issue, but the overall impact is non-existent. At this moment in time, clearly Raheem Sterling is not really rated like that. We're carrying players. Like the only players that I would say at this moment in time I have full-hearted confidence in is probably Martin Odegaard, William Saliba, Gabriel, Benjamin White when fit. Uh, you know, who else is there? Thomas Partey when he's available. Obviously, Bukayo Saka. Uh, to a degree, Kai Havertz, it's more of a case of you're in your being asked to fill boots you can't fill. And I'm not trying to scapegoat or get onto certain players, but we're carrying too many players. There's too many players that could be upgraded upon. We know it's not FIFA. You're never going to see seven or eight. And uh, reality is with Gabriel Jesus, when you're not impacting the game, which, yeah, we used to say, fair enough, you don't score. You will score from an acute angle. You know, we always used to say, Gabriel jesus when it came to specifically goal scoring he makes the difficult look easy and the easy look difficult the man will miss a tapping from five yards or an open goal and then he'll dance past four five six seven players and score from an acute angle so the impact was there a bit like when we had lacazette but when you're not scoring you're not impacting the game really don't know what you what we're getting off the pit off the bench and facts of the matter is one goal in his last 31 appearances and that came against preston with the greatest of respect for someone that's a premier league winner one of the most experienced players for someone like Mikel Arteta that says he's changed our world it is what it is I hear it you know people do need a run in the side he's probably down his confidence etc but at the end of the day you're not doing the business it's as, it's as simple as that really and truly it, re it really is Mikel Arteta did once say he changed our world he also said Tini could be in line for some more first team football as well I'm not one to believe these rumours but for giving you lot content this article it says Barcelona leave Nico Williams to Arsenal Arsenal have received a massive boost to their hopes of signing Nico Williams after Barcelona's interest in the Euro 2024 star subsided. Now, that doesn't mean other clubs are not going to get involved. That doesn't mean Barcelona aren't not going to get involved. But apparently, according to Sport, Barcelona are no longer focused on making a big move for Williams. Apparently, they've been desperate to sign him in the past summer for financial reasons, were unable to do such. Obviously, Rafinha has been brilliant. Yalmao is brilliant. And they have signed Dali Almo people. And it does feel like, based on rumours, they're shifting their focus to a striker they've been linked with your Correz, jonathan david there's definitely somebody else i'm missing out even early in harlem whether they can afford that or not we've also subsequently seen rumors in relation to nico williams that Mikel arteta would love to get that done in january does nico williams want to leave his boyhood club mid-season after making a big song and dance about competing in europe with bill bow i'm not too sure yes he's got a release clause and if there's a willingness to get a deal done i and i think every arsenal fan would love it but the illusion sounds a lot better than the reality, people. So, yeah, apparently this comes as great news for Arsenal as it's been reported over the last few days that Mikel Arteta has demanded the signing of Nico Williams in January in an attempt to rescue the Gunners' faltering title challenge. Arsenal journalist Charles Watts says that Arteta wants to sign an attacker during the January transfer window as he feels the Gunners are lightweight in this area. Again, he's got a €58 million Euros release clause. Chelsea apparently are interested in greedy in it you, you know but you never know chelsea will sign whoever so we'll have to see man it don't necessarily mean we've got a free run where we've been relinked with a striker but it's nice to see in my opinion a different name allegedly arsenal are among numerous clubs eyeing a potential deal for talented young bologna forward santiago castro he's 20 years of age they've allegedly scouted him in recent Serie A matches Fair enough, Kivio and Tommy Asu were defenders, but it seems that 
we're, we're kind of tapped in where Italy's concerned. And we did try and sign Vlahovic once upon a time. As well as Arsenal, Kai Stroh has also other admirers in the Premier League in the form of Newcastle, Aston Villa and Everton. Um, obviously, at 20 years of age, he's going to be a development striker. So is this someone that can rotate in and out with Kai Havertz and isn't necessarily a level raiser? I'm not sure, people. Um, he's got four goals and three assists in the Italian top flight so far. He could go allegedly for 40 million euros and is, and, and is apologies, an RG. Argentina under 20 international so we'll have to see but if you've got every all these clubs interested who knows Aston Villa apparently have been linked and you know they've got John Duran and Ollie Watkins Duran who came off the bench and scored another goal of the season contender in the Champions League for Aston Villa would love that man at the carpet but probably dream chasing in that regards people Moving moving away from that, Arsenal in talks to sign Barcelona won the kid on now Podas, according to reports in Spain. I think he's a baller, but to label him says Fabregas 2.0 is a madness. Apparently, um, he's in negotiations to leave the Camp Nou following contact with Mikel Arteta. That's according to a Spanish outlet, El Nacional. So we'll have to see what's going on there. Uh, Jokerez is hit out at you, uh, sporting fans, people, for throwing things and carrying on a certain sort of way. Since Amarin has left Sporting, it's obviously not been the quite kind of form they would like to see. You would imagine Jokerez goals, and once again, he's been linked with Paris Saint-Germain, Manchester United, who I think will sign him, Chelsea and Arsenal people. So, we'll have to watch that space. Back a Yoko, a player we all would have liked in the summer. Apparently, Newcastle are tracking him ahead of January, and they're also tracking Adam Ola Lookman, who had a, he scored a good finish against Real Madrid, had a great game against Real Madrid and I think every Arsenal fan would love to see Adam Ola Lookman at Arsenal as his contract is up in 2026 so next summer Atalanta if they don't get him to commit a new deal have a decision to make people um, so yeah Newcastle apparently looking at Bakayoko and Adam Ola Lookman Lookman who's been aggressively linked with us we all saw Nuno Tavares join Lazio and doesn't look that that good defensively but it's getting a lot of assists and to be fair with Lazio they got him for about 8-9 million euros or something like that the report said or up to 10 um, and they'll probably make a profit on him if and when the time goes apparently Arsenal have a 40% sell-on clause on the for the 24-year-old big up Nuno Tavares he's recently been in the Portuguese international scene as well Fabio Vieira boy Nuno Tavares got a cap for Portugal before Fabio Vieira absolute madness Brace for Marcus Rashford to be linked with Arsenal. Apparently, Manchester United are open to selling Rashford people and were open to selling him last summer. There's concerns about off-the-field distractions with the striker. So maybe a move away from Manny to London could boost could boost Rashford, if that is true. But at the same time, when you're financially free, you've got a lot of money. And London is essentially, even though us normal people are in a living crisis, if you're a millionaire, billionaire, financially free, it's a playground. So... I'm not too sure, really. And I don't want to talk on Rashford off the field because for obvious reasons, we know with certain individuals, this is thrown around. I don't know him as a person. But when you look at Arsenal at this moment in time, you know, it seems like there's stability. You know, if they haven't got kids already every week, it seems like Arsenal players are getting married, having kids or in long term relationships. And maybe they are because they have lives, but we're not hearing any of this off-field distraction. So is that something Mikel Arteta wants to deal with? That's before we even talk about Marcus Rashford from purely a footballing aspect, really. Um, we've been linked with Mohamed Kudus. Allegedly, people, man, sorry, not Manchester United, West Ham United could be open to selling Kudus for £80 million this January. Can we really see Arsenal fronting up the cash for that? Allegedly, he's got a release clause. Listen, I would love to have Mohamed Kudus. He could play on the left, play on the right, play centrally. It'd be amazing for Arsenal Football Club. Club, a great dribbler. Not sure if Arteta would want you to dribble. You know, been at Ajax as well, the Arsenal to Ajax pathway. We didn't get Lissandro Martinez. We were linked with Hato. Obviously, Timbers slotted in very well. I know he's at West Ham, but that sort of thing could be something for us. If it was just on ability and X factor and a difference maker, Mohamed Kudus is more than welcome to join Arsenal Football Club, people. For me, Arsenal apparently are considering a January move to sign Vlahovic from Juventus. It's easy to link us with him. So we're getting Kudus and Vlahovic in January and we've got a free run at Nico Williams. This is wavy. Martin Odegaard has responded to set-piece critics. He said, it's funny to watch. Suddenly people start to criticise you for being good at something. That's a bit funny. I think Mikel said that we want to be the best at everything we do and set-pieces are an important part of football. Listen, at this current climate, Set pieces, the set piece coach, the whole ethos around set pieces, fantastic. Keep that up. But so big up Nicholas Hover deserves his new deal. 
And obviously, you have to create to earn corners. And teams have given us corners and we've done quite well. If they don't want us to score from corners or be good at corners, don't let us. My issue is I like the build-up play. I like the ethos. But it feels like that couple percentages of that healthy invention and intention, that randomness, that foot, that is the reason we watch football. It's missing. It's too scripted and granted it needs to be scripted you know if we can't go for a goal back you can't go down the left go down the right but can we move the ball a bit for a, a bit quicker can we have a bit more healthy randomness because I might not and you lot might not necessarily rate the options of Kai Havertz, Bakayo Saka, Martinelli indirectly Martin Odegaard, Declan Rice in the eight, Trossard, Martinelli uh, he doesn't play but Raheem Sterling the young Ethan do we think we can't upgrade on this and have a striker or a winger? Probably not. We probably do. But should the problems, individually, we should be able to talk about the players, but should creating and all of these things be an issue? At worst, we should be seeing what we saw last season. If you remember the game at the Emirates against West Ham, where we had a billion chances, did not put the ball in the back of the net. And also you could extend that to Liverpool in the FA Cup. We shouldn't, you know, because for me... Yes, I want, you know, we've spoken about Nico Williams, Kudus, Adamola, Lukman. I don't know, you know, you could, I wouldn't be against necessarily a Vlahovic, Isaac, Sesko, all of these guys. But is it, oh, from what we're seeing on a footballing basis, is it as simple as you get these attackers and we're better as a team in the final third? Of course, these players might score a bit more. There might be a bit of individual brilliance. But I personally think that would be a, a very bit of naive thinking, people. Arsenal, Aston Villa, Liverpool and Manchester United allegedly have all sent scouts to monitor Kaelan Yildiz's progress at Juventus. The teenager is valued at 80 million euros. They're not going to let him go without a fight. Quality player, done a video on him. Would love him. But yeah, we've been linked with the names I said before. Arda Galera and also him. Bring the Turks to the team, man. <laughs> Mesut Ozil, start texting them, if I'm honest with you. Uh, I know we're not going to get Bruno Gomares and definitely not in January, but allegedly Newcastle are braced for a January bid for Bruno Gomares from Manchester City. Apparently, Newcastle are still under pressure to sell to avoid breaching spending rules. And Gomares is one of the most lucrative assets alongside Isaac. That's reported by, I believe, Talk Sports' Alex Crook people. Leroy Sane hasn't been necessarily linked with us, but Sky Germany have said a free transfer for Sane in the summer can no longer be ruled out. Some decision makers at Bayern would not be opposed to a sell in the winter, fueling rumours to Arsenal, essentially, people. Apparently, they've been holding contract talks. Clearly, nothing's been been res resolved. There's still a long way to go. Apparently, his priority is to stay at Bayern Munich. So that's where you have it. Once upon a time, we was linked with Daniel Marlin. Apparently, he'll be allowed to leave Borussia Dortmund in January. A deal can be done if a suitable offer comes in. The German club want 25 to 30 million for him. If we're going to get somebody from Dortmund, in my opinion, it has to be that Gittens you. He's bagging and he's English and he looks like we could do a thing. So, boy, man, I do think I speak for every Arsenal fan where we'd love some additions in January. We would have hoped that this would have been addressed in the summer. But from now until January at the very earliest, assuming January the 1st opens and we sign players, now's not the time. R rightly or wrongly, we've got what we've got. Mikel Arteta, as he always said, is going to have to find internal solutions. <laughs>